Hi, thank you for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Today, we have a mission challenge based on the first chapter of Acts, verse 8. As always, you can download the life notes from our website at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. Have a seat, and I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1 is our text. And if you don't have a Bible with you, that is perfectly fine. If you're here at our Sweetwater campus, then there's Bibles in the seats around you. Grab one of those, turn to page 1080, and you'll be able to find Acts chapter 1. If you're at our Parker campus, then uh, and there's a table right in the back, middle of the room. Just get up right now, go back there, grab a Bible, turn to page 1080, and you'll be able to follow along with us. And, and as always, if you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one. It is our gift to you. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible, I'm sorry, but if you ask us, uh, we'll send you one. Just communicate with us. Your service host will be glad to get you a Bible. We want everyone to have God's Word, read God's Word, because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, uh, we are, uh, oh, by the way, I'm not preaching alone tonight. Did you notice that? I don't, I don't know if you caught that or not, but uh, Amber Smith, our serve coordinator, is with me, and uh, we've got some guests that will be joining us throughout the, the evening. So, uh, but it's just starting off with Amber and I, and uh, glad that you're here, because the last few weeks, we've been talking about the generosity challenge, and then we talked about the legacy challenge, we talked about the tithing challenge, and I know, I know it's been challenging for many of you listening to this. Some of you are like, when are you gonna start talking about something else? Well, hey, I just, can I just remind you that everything we teach is based in God's word. And if you take God at his word, if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. And some of it is easy and most of it is not. And, and it really requires submission and surrender, but all of it is to bless us. So if uh, you haven't enjoyed the past few weeks, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we can't change what we teach. It is the word of God. And if you surrender to Jesus, he's going to bless your life incredibly. So that's why we teach what God's word says, because we want to bless you and have you have a blessed life. So this weekend, we're con- concluding the generosity challenge, and we're talking about the mission challenge. The mission challenge. Acts chapter one, verse eight. Jesus, in his final words to his apostles, says these words. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And then if you read on, you find out that then Jesus ascended to heaven and the angels were there saying, hey, stop looking up and start getting to work. No, he he told them a few things. But, uh, But here's the thing. If you are a follower of Jesus... If you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God, Savior of the world, if you believe Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then please understand that this challenge is for all believers. The challenge of Jesus. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses This is for all of us who claim Jesus as Lord. Now, if you're here in the room and you don't yet claim Jesus as Lord, this challenge isn't for you. The challenge for you is to decide whether or not you believe Jesus is the Son of God, Savior of the world. And we want you to do that. We want you to be like the young couple that declared their faith in Jesus this week uh, when it was cold, windy, and uncomfortable. And they didn't care. They did it anyway. So, uh, but if you're a follower of Jesus, you're a witness for Jesus. And to be that witness for Jesus requires two things. Two absolute things for all of us. This is, applies to every single one of us. First of all, character. We can't represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. And if we try to speak in the name of Jesus, we try to act in the name of Jesus, we try to represent Jesus without reflecting his character, we're hypocrites. We're hypocrites. And, and we actually do harm to the gospel because we're trying to represent Jesus when our lives don't reflect his character. And so as his witnesses, he wants our lives to reflect his character. That's the first thing. Yeah, and the, the second thing is we need to live on mission. So what are we doing? What are you doing 
uh, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And see, this is not something just as the church collectively t- is called to, but it is a call for each individual follower of Jesus. And so we need to evaluate our own personal lives and ask ourselves, what are we doing to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus? And so what we want to do tonight is we want to share with you what we as Calvary are doing to accept the missions challenge and give you examples and, and let you decide how you want to participate. And so the first thing that we need to look at is um, our local missions. And so this is what um, Jesus was referring to when he said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea. This was where his disciples lived. Um, So the first local mission is where you are living at needs to be the first thing and then go out from there. So I just want you to know that everything you give to Calvary goes in in its essence, to the mission of leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And the majority of that goes to leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus in Lake Havasu and Parker. Okay, those are our home bases, if you will. That's our Jerusalem and Judea. That's where we live right now. Those are our campuses and our communities. And, uh, And then... So every, every dime goes to, you know, help support uh, the buildings, help support the electricity, the chairs, help support the staff, all of that. So uh, that's going on. But out of that, we as a church give to missions. And, and so we give a percentage, and so we pass that on. You guys add to that in things that you want to give to. And I want you to understand, last year, in the last 12 months, Calvary, that's you guys, have given $853,386 to missions. I mean, we're getting, we're getting close to giving a million dollars a year to missions as a church in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that, that's literally what we're, what we're doing. And I think that's incredible. Uh, just uh, as a record, since last uh, weekend, we gave out gift cards I don't know if you realize that when we give out gift cards on a weekend, all of our campuses, all of the time, we're, we're giving away over $12,000 in gift cards. That is all from you guys' generosity in benevolence. We take up that benevolence offering after communion and we give that away and we're gonna do that again in a few weeks from now uh, for Christmas uh, as, as well. So $168,000 you guys gave to, to help people in our communities last year. So incredible generosity and that, that results in life change happening. Uh, So in the last 11 months, because that's how many months we've been in this year so far, right? So 2023, we have baptized 213 people already. See, if I danced, I'd get up and dance right now. But uh, but I'm I'm just saying, we 213 baptisms, and the year's not over yet. And by the way, if uh, you're interested in declaring your faith in baptism, we'd love to help you be obedient to Jesus. That's what we do. And just let us know, fill out a connect card, tell one of the prayer team members after the service, and we'll schedule that baptism because we'll baptize you anywhere there's crowd and a water. And, and, and we'll just go ahead and, and do that. And, uh, and I, but we got Christmas services coming up. What a great way to tell the world you're a faithful follower of Jesus getting baptized on Christmas Eve. I think that'd be really cool. So I, if, you, if you're interested, let us know. But at the same time, uh, if you're one of our online participants and you want us to baptize you, it doesn't have to just be in Lake Havasu or Parker. If you're watching online from wherever, we'll come baptize you. Just invite us because uh, we'll help you be obedient to Jesus and celebrate your faith as well. Uh, but not only do we just lead people to life change directly through the ministries of Calvary, through the generosity of Calvary, through the message of Calvary, but we bless local agencies and nonprofits in our community. And so uh, we partner with, uh, here's just some of them. We partner with Pregnancy Care, which is a ministry that, uh, you know, promotes life, especially to moms who find out that they're pregnant that was unexpected. And uh, some people are thinking about terminating that pregnancy. And, and Pregnancy Care advocates for the choice of life. And they help the moms with resources and education. Uh, and it's a great ministry. So we partner with Pregnancy Care. Uh, we also partner with the local food bank, and uh, we give funds every year to help buy food. Um, and since COVID, um, the number of families that are in using the food bank here um, in Havasu has tripled in number. And so Calvary um, helps fund the food bank. And, and we partner with Faith and Grace, the local uh, domestic violence shelter, uh, which provides not only a safe place to live, but helps rebuild women's lives through counseling, job training, all things like that. 
We also partner with our local schools. Uh, we do work projects, we do serve our schools, um, we give out gift cards to teachers, and we do teacher appreciation throughout the yeah. year. So our next big ministry push, aside from finishing the, the building in Parker, which is almost done, not quite, but almost, is our North Lake Havasu City campus. And so this is Rick and Lori Childers. And uh, hey, welcome. And Rick and Lori, uh, Rick is our, our North Campus pastor for uh, our new campus in Lake Havasu City. You're like, where's that going to be? It's going to be in the North End because it's the North Campus. <laughs> right? Guys, guys get that? And uh, uh, so we don't have a physical location yet. We're, you know, trying to figure it out because we're not going to launch for another year uh, in January of 2025 is our plan. But uh, Rick is, is our pastor. He's partnering. We're partnering with North American Mission Board to, to start this campus. And so, Rick, I just got to ask you, how did you go from uh, being, you know, you've been a mortgage broker lately, uh, mortgage broker to being our campus pastor for our North Campus? I'm not really a mortgage broker. Well, I am, but I'm disguised as one. I'm actually a pastor. I've been a pastor for 30 years. I've pastored churches in California and also in Oregon. And uh, my wife, Lori, and I moved here in 2018. My pet peeve has always been when uh, churches stay small and become inward. I've seen that for years. And uh, the issue with that for me is if God calls a church to a community, he wants you to reach that community. That's what you should be doing. And so Lori and I got involved here at Calvary and saw all the ways that Calvary's reaching out to the community, um, is serving the community. And we said, that's a place we want to go to church because they're actually reaching their community. So we got involved in life groups, which is awesome. I recommend it. We also got involved in the uh, marriage mentoring ministry. And we're just serving here just like you. And went to lunch with Pastor Chad one day, and he began to share his vision uh, for a North Campus uh, to start eventually. We have folks coming in from uh, the north end of town. It could take 20 to 30 minutes to get here, even from Havasu Heights, which is even longer, all the way out to Yucca. And they're coming to the south end of town. So it only would make sense that part of the vision of the church would be to put a, a campus in the north end of town to reach more people for Christ in our city. So we just began to pray about that. And then all of a sudden, something happened. You guys remember COVID? COVID happened and it kind of put things on uh, the back burner for a couple years, but uh, now we have the opportunity. The North End is growing and uh, the time is right. So uh, we are excited about doing that. Yeah, and we're talking about Desert Hills, Refuge Area, North Point, Viewpoint, all the way out to the Heights where they're just starting to develop that and it's gonna blow up in the next 10 years or so. But um, Rick, how can we help you as you step into this role of being a campus pastor on the North End? I'm so glad you asked. So, so what, what it is, it's, it's a north campus uh, of Calvary, just like Parker is. So we're doing something on the north end, so we need all the ministries that we have here just to duplicate them um, out there to reach that area. So I am starting now, Lori and I are starting a launch team, starting to get people together who can start life groups to reach out to the north area, start other ministries to just kind of do um, outreach in... Uh, in the process of actually starting services, launching that uh, the beginning of January 2025. This year, we're gonna be putting ministries in place and we would love for you to be a part of that. We'd love for you to help us start some life groups on the north end of town. We'd love for you to be involved in Celebrate Recovery, starting that ministry on the north end of town. We I, I knew you guys would show up eventually. Thank you for that. <laughs> and then, you know, all the other ministries, youth ministry, children's ministries, men's ministries, women's ministry, greeters, um, production, everything we do here, we just want to do it on the north end so that we can reach more people for Christ in the refuge area, North Point, and all of the north area. So if you live in the north or you would like to help us build a congregation, a campus in the north, we would love for you to sign up with us later so that we can start getting together with you, train you, work with you, start life groups so we're ready to go uh, on the north end of town to do that. We're looking to probably, if you'd like to do that, to commit to at least six months to help us get launched and, uh, and then we'll go from there, but uh, we'd love to have you. So if, you, uh, if you're interested, Rick and Lori will be available after the service out in the foyer. Stop by and talk to them, uh, sign up with them. If, uh, 
you know, if you want to fill out a Connect card and just say North Campus on there, we'll give it to Rick. He'll call you this week uh, to help him be part of that. And especially if you live in one of those gated communities, uh, you're our access in. So if you'd like to maybe host a life group or be part of uh, that launch team, especially uh, contact Rick because we would love to partner with you to see people come to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, if, uh, by the way, we're going to pray for Rick and Lori, and I would just love for you to join with me in praying for them and for the success of this North Campus. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thanks for loving us, and thank you for your call on Rick and Lori's life to be your servants. And, uh, and Lord, we know that we want to reach this entire community with the gospel. We know that unchurched people aren't going to drive 20, 30 minutes to go to church. That's just inconvenient. They don't understand why it'd be important. So we want to invade their area and we want to invite them into that life-changing relationship. So I pray for Rick and Lori that you'd give them wisdom. You would give them leaders. You would open doors. You would provide a place. And God, you would work through them in a powerful way so that we can reach that north end more effectively with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, thanks for you guys being with us. Now, that's just some of what we do in, to be Jesus witnesses in our local context. Uh, now we want to talk about international missions. Uh, this is where, what Jesus referenced when he said, you know, you'll be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Because it's not just about us. It's not just about our local communities. It's about people in places that we don't even know about places we don't want to go, because that's what Samaria was to the Jews. They didn't want to go there. It, it's, it's about people that uh, we've never, we've got no chance of meeting uh, just so that we can share the gospel with them. It's about being intentional in missions throughout the world. So through our budget giving, plus your special donations, let me just tell you some of the things that we have seen happen around the world. So we, as Calvary, have built over 100 Mozambique wells. Now, these are wells, freshwater wells, in areas of the poorest of the poor in this world. These are subsistence farmers. Uh, they are living literally in mud and grass houses with no doors, no windows. Uh, animals come in. That's how they live. And they would have to walk up to two miles to get fresh water. And a lot of times it wasn't even clean water. It was just water. And so we go into these communities. We built these wells. And now, because of your generosity, over 75,000 people a day are drinking clean and fresh water. Yeah, I think that's incredible. And they're planting churches and sharing the gospel and seeing people come to faith in Christ. So that's one of the ways we partner, and Amber? Yeah, we also sponsored um, to build a compassion center in Honduras, and this um, serves over 200 children every single day where they get food, education, hygiene, um, and most importantly, they get to hear about Jesus and how he loves them and wants a relationship with them. Um, but it doesn't affect just those kids. It changes their family dynamic and it changes the community. Um, and Compassion International is um, working in impoverished areas and God is moving in those areas. Um, and we have a trip planned for February of next year to go to that Compassion Center, pray for them, dedicate that center and see and visit all the kids, um, which is really exciting. Um, we also uh, last year started a part partnership with Baja Bound in Baja, Mexico to build houses for families who literally have nothing. Um, and so it's taking kids off, sleeping off dirt floors and building them a home where they can feel safe. They have a door that actually locks and they have a bed, um, which changes their family. And it has a generational impact. Um, children are more likely to survive not sleeping on the dirt. Um, and so we are planning on going again, uh, April 12th through 14th of 2024. Um, we've already built three houses and we are hoping to build two more uh, in April um, to help more families. Um, and so each house costs $11,000 to build. Uh, and so we need $22,000 to build two more houses and we need about 40 people to go. And so if you're interested in that, you can sign up online. All right. And then this past summer, we started a partnership in Zambia uh, where uh, we're hoping to this next year launch the, the very first Celebrate Recovery in the country of Zambia. 
I mean, you guys know how powerful the recovery ministry is for us. The entire country doesn't have any Celebrate Recovery. So we're going to be taking it there. We're going to be doing evangelism partnership with churches. And that's going to be June 19th through July 4th. If you have always had a dream about being a missionary for two weeks in Africa, I can help you out. So uh, if you're interested in going, see me afterwards, email me, and we will uh, talk about the Zambia trip. Uh, and it doesn't just stop there, but through our partnership with the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, we help as a church through our, our giving to support almost uh, 3,600 missionaries around the world. And it just so happens that two of their newest appointed missionaries are sitting beside me. This is Joe and Katrina Cooper. Now, Joe and Katrina, yeah. They are from Calvary. They've been part of us uh, for years and God has done a work in their life. And so I want you guys to meet them because they're planning on uh, going to South Asia in like the next six months. And so uh, they can tell you a little bit about that. But I just gotta ask you guys uh, as just ordinary people, because that's what I've known you as. I mean, Joe, you're a regional sales manager for O'Reilly Auto Parts. Katrina, you're a physical therapy assistant working here in town. Uh, you're just ordinary people, normal people. How did you end up going to the mission field? Well, it, uh, it looked differently for both of us. Um, for me, it just started with seeking. I think like most people, uh, I just woke up every day and I just sought the American dream. I... Uh, took the Holy Spirit, I kept him in a box, and then I would let the Holy Spirit out on Sundays, or like in this case, you know, Saturday for a few songs, I'd put him back in the box, and then, because uh, I had work on Monday, and you know, that was uh, what the general direction of my life was, was just uh, seeking the American dream, making sure there was enough money in the bank account to, uh, to, to make sure I could pursue that bigger house or the next car or, you know, everything else that, uh, that people seek um, in, in, in our culture and society. Um, it wasn't really seeking um, the Lord, or it wasn't really seeking Jesus as being my Lord and Savior um, until the call to missions came. And then I started putting value more on what his call for my life was rather than my own call for my life. And then um, it looked a little different for Trina because uh, she... She, I got the call first, and then she was like, well, I'll let her tell you about that, but <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she has her own story for the call, but uh, it, it was mine first, and then um, I had to pray for the Holy Spirit to bring her along. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina, tell us about yours. So, um, Joe and I have been married 22 and a half years, but the first 12 years, we were very unequally yoked. Joe didn't go to church. Um, I went to church, I was the Christian leader of our household, and I took the kids to church, and he supported that. Um, but it took us actually moving to Lake Havasu, and we came to Calvary, and he saw his son baptized. And God started, started working in him, but then it really was life group that changed our lives mm. immensely. Um, through life group, when Joe finally was willing to go, um, <laughs> Then God came into our house with such a force, I can't even describe it, there aren't words. And um, we started growing in love in ways I can't describe as we grew as mature Christians. And at several years later, we were able to be rebaptized with God at the center of our home. And at our 20 year anniversary, we renewed our vows with God at the center of our marriage and our house. And so like Joe said, he had the call to missions and he brought it up to me and I was like, mm, I'm not doing that someday. <laughs> I'm gonna be a grandma and God is not gonna put me on the other side of the world away from those babies, that's not fair. So it's okay, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna keep doing my ministry of my job and you're gonna go and God's gonna bring you back and you'll just visit me. <laughs> and I sought out the counsel of a Christian mentor who said, oh, I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> God doesn't split up couples. Several years later, our friend came back from the mission field and he invited us to his home to watch a movie, Sheep Among Wolves. <laughs> and we were watching this movie, and as we're watching this movie, 
that absolutely should have deterred me because this movie is about how Christians and other parts of the world are persecuted in ways that can't be described and it's unimaginable, but they do nothing but praise God for every single persecution and it's considered a blessing. And so Joe was like, oh my gosh, it's over. Trina is never going. <laughs> and we were driving home from Kingman, so it was a long drive. I don't even think we were in the drive 10 minutes and I said, God is calling me. And he said, what? I said, I'm jealous. I want to love God like they do. Yeah. Yeah. And so we started searching out mission boards and we settled on the International Missions Board because they have such a great training program. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you um, trust God in the midst of fear that comes as you're preparing? Because you're gonna leave everything you've known and you're going to a new place and you're gonna go to a place that is pretty dangerous. Well, it, it's not that. It's not scary. There are, aspect, there are aspects of it that, uh, that are scary, and everything that we're leaving behind is scary. Um, but uh, the, the main push is that it's hard to conceive in our culture, but um, in South Asia, over 99% of them are non-Christian. That means that the vast majority of the people that you meet in your interactions with everyday life it's the first time that they will ever meet a Christian, and maybe the last time that they'll ever meet a Christian. It's literally their only opportunity that they ever have to hear the gospel message from a person that's experienced a relationship with Jesus and what that's been like. And so just with that motivating, um, that's able to make me push past the fear. So you, just to clarify, you care more about the people's eternity than whatever fear you're facing. Yeah. Yeah, and um, in our looking at the International Admissions Board, and we also got to go on a small trip this summer to the country that we've decided on, um, that we feel called, led to, we got to meet a lot of these missionaries, and they have such a great program. So we have our wonderful support system at Calvary and in Lake Havasu, but we met some of the people and they also have it there. So we will, um, through our developing friendships, we'll be able to do, develop those Christian mentors there and a support, not only in those missionaries, but the International Missions Board um, also has things in place when missionaries might have um, burnout or whatever. They have actually counseling available and they have just such a great um, program. Yeah. Hey, we are uh, excited that you are our missionaries going to uh, South Asia. And, and we will, you know, I just want you guys to know we're going to be partnering with them. If you would like to talk to them about their story or about how you can be prayer partners with them uh, as they go, they're going to be available in the foyer after the service. Uh, you can sign up to be on their prayer list and, and really partner with them uh, as they get ready to go. And I just have to point out, uh, after Katrina's story, ladies, be careful what you pray for. Uh, she's praying for her husband to get saved, and he did. She's praying for her husband to come to church with her, and then she ends up on the mission field. So uh, <laughs> God's plans are better than our plans, even with sometimes like, hey, God, uh, that's far enough, all right? Um, hey, Amber, would you pray for Joe and Katrina and just to you guys join with us and praying for them as they get ready uh, to go? God, um, just thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for the call that you've placed on the Cooper's life. God, I just pray that you would um, fill them with your, um, your power. God, fill them with your grace and your love. Give them confidence in you. Um, God, and that you would just use them mightily in, in where you have called them to go. Uh, let them go courageously um, with their identity firmly planted in you, God. Just uh, speak through them and, and just go ahead of them, preparing people's hearts to receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that you would just uh, work through them and bring about life change in a mighty, mighty way. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, thank you guys for sharing. So we come back to where we started. We return to the mission challenge. Does your life, do your actions, do your words 
represent Jesus. Because we can't really represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. And how are you leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus? How are you participating in the mission of Christ? See, we are all called as individual followers of Christ to be Christ's ambassadors to the world, sharing his love, um, starting with where we live and then going to the ends of the world. So I'm gonna give you four practical ways of how you can live this out. And the first one is by praying. This is something every single one of us in this room and watching online can do. We can pray for people that don't have a relationship with Jesus. We can pray for missionaries around the world, which you now know two of. Um, we can pray that God would use them and, and work in the communities that they're living in. We can pray for compassion kids and other kids around the world who are starving and in need. Um, we can pray for God to continue to send resources so that we can do missions both locally and around the world. And then the second one is that we can give. See, God has called us to live generously. And since we live in America, we have more resources than most other places around the world. See, we have cleaner water in our showers than people living in Mozambique do, which is why we give to build wells. We have safe homes and we ha don't have to sleep on the dirt, which is why we build houses for families in Mexico. And since we are blessed to live in America, let's live in a way to use Use our resources that God has blessed us with to be able to give generously and care for those who don't have anything. So prayer, giving, and then we can serve. See, God has called all of us to serve in some capacity. And there are so many different ways that you can serve. You could serve with security or the medical team. You could be a first impressions greeter. You can make coffee. You can serve with children or youth. Um, you can serve in the community. We have Night to Shine coming up in February. There are endless ways that you can serve but we're all called to serve. And so if you're not serving in some area right now, then ask yourself, what do you need to do to take that next step of obedience and serve Christ? And then the last thing that we can do is we can go. And some of you might be called, like the Cooperts, to go overseas. Some of you may be called to go on a trip to Honduras or Zambia or Mexico. Or maybe it's a trip that's coming up closer to home at Peach Springs, December 10th. Um, or some of you, it might just be going across the street and inviting your neighbor to church. But whatever God is calling you to do, will you listen to his voice in your life and will you respond in obedience? You see... I believe that God wants all of us involved in his mission. I mean, this is the mission challenge. And the question that all of us need to struggle with is what are we gonna do with our lives? Let's pray. Father, you are good to us. Jesus was the missionary that brought the good news into this world, that brought the good news to us. You have changed our lives and for that, we are grateful because you have changed our immediate uh, present, but you've also changed our eternal destination. And, and so in gratitude, we simply wanna say thanks. And God, we want you to use our lives. And, and so uh, just speak to us, we're listening. And, and God, while it may not be easy for us to hear what you want us to do, our ears are open and our hearts are yours and we will follow you. Uh, whatever you ask of us, we will do. That's our commitment. That's our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A common misconception about missions is that it's work for others to do. The reality is that all followers of Jesus are to be missionaries. Whether you travel internationally to reach the lost or stay in your own town, the Great Commission applies to all believers. To hear more about Calvary, we invite you to visit our website and sign up for our Word for the Day daily devotionals. To do so, please visit calvaryaz.com forward slash Devo. That's spelled D-E-V-O. Well, that'll do it for today. I hope you'll join us again next week. Bye-bye.